it out here today? Intimidation. Intimidation. Intimidation, right. Yeah, I'm gonna everyone intimidation scared. towards who? Though. Intimidation towards everyone that is here to see them. So everybody that is here to witness, they know who they are. But you know, they aren't phased. These people have, um, they're, I always call it Jumanji 1.0. They passed that and now they're in Jumanji 2.0. They're not afraid of law enforcement, I can tell you right now. So they're wasting their time. They need to go find the drug traffickers, the human uh, trafficking, sex trafficking. They need to find people that are the bad guys. These are not the bad guys. Now, no matter what we want to label them, the fact is that they're human beings. And to his point, this is a humanitarian issue. This is a humanitarian crisis. This particular land that I'm on in El Paso, Texas, I'm seriously thinking that they have a crooked spine at this point, that they need to start to rectify, because this is not the way we do things. This is team human, not team Democratic, not team Republican. This is team human. All we want is water, food, and safe shelter for these people, because tears don't have color. What do you think this intimidation can do to the migrants that are, have been staying here for, for days now, for weeks? It's, first of all, if you just came here and just talked to them, I think that's what law enforcement needs. I think that's what the judges need on the federal, state, and local level. If they just came down here and no cameras were around and they could just ask people honestly, say, hey, why are you here? You'd realize that a lot of these people came here walking for four months and were assaulted, some were raped, and some people didn't make the destination because they were murdered. Imagine that. So they came because they have to. They're not here because they want to be here. They don't want to be American. They don't want to be in a country that's not theirs, with a culture that's not theirs, with a people that hates them. Who would want to be in that type of situation? You'd have to be very insane. So they're here because they have to, because the political situation has reached such a level of criminality. And now it seems like, well, they're living kind of the same thing. So they can't move. They want what everybody wants. They want a dignified life. They want permission to be here. They want to work. You know, they come here to do everything that migrants have always done. We, the brown people, we, the black people, we, the red people, built this country. The very road that you're driving on, the very car that you drive, the very house that you live in, the clothes on your back, and the food that people here in the United States of America put in their mouths and feed their children with, guess what? By us, by them. So it's very, it's very hypocritical to talk like this. And, and if you do talk like this, at least not to us, you should hold your tongue. You are not our enemy. The brown people are not our enemy. The Chicano community is not our enemy. We have been so divided. We have been so compartmentalized and polarized to such an extent that we actually believe that we're white and we're not white. And we never will be white. There's nothing wrong with being white, but don't put us in that position because it is, it's like history repeating itself once again, mm -hmm. and we're we're more than offended. I mean, I it's it's not about offensive anymore. Now it's like now you want to war with us, and if and, and like I said, the only thing we want for these people is a dignified life. And if it's if it comes to be some sort of battle, well then, I mean, let's take it to court. If that's what you want, let's do it. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to win because now you have the world watching, and now you're going to be ashamed and. And we're not trying to expose racism in El Paso, but it's exposing itself. Truth always comes out to the light. And you're, you're, not, you're not facing cowards. You're not facing foolish men and women. So I, I, I ask people to really come out and reconsider their position when it comes to uh, the Venezuelan migrants here. The mental health care toll that it is taking on the community and everyone that's watching all over our nation is significant enough to discuss. I want to first thank the uh, people that have actually been proactive outside of the El Paso city limit and county line and trying to help us send a message out. I had someone today in New York that wants to sponsor and buy all his paints back and all any, everything that you need, they're going to give it to you, whatever you want, because we are not going to be silenced and what's wrong is wrong. Now, I want to just give you a little bit of insight. This, this trauma that we're all feeling, and it's, it's you guys. Y'all have been through a lot. It's our law enforcement. They've been through a lot. Some law enforcement aren't even, they're disjointed with the officials saying what we, they think they need to do here. It's taking a mental health toll. 
and our governor talks about mental health like it's every like that's what's happening that we mess with people's mental health well well yes let's let's talk about that greg abbott because this is taking a toll on what it is that you cite that everyone struggles with because that is the common denominator no matter if you're brown red no matter if you're what we all have a level of mental disconcertedness and watching this only promotes it more we are reeling from covid deaths we're reeling from uvalde we are reeling from from the shooting the mass shootings that have happened and our friends and brothers and sisters in buffalo we're still reeling as americans there's a reason why we're here we're your voice we're your eyes we're your mouth and we're not leaving and Tara, there's a concerted effort by the city of El Paso to hand out food, to hand out water, and to hand out blankets and warm clothing. I am actually offended that someone, an official said that they're offended by his artwork. They're going to fixate on a piece of art and not fixate on two twin ch children that are over there sleeping that look very sick. So something that he, something that he did, the, the stroke of his soul, plucked something in their guilty conscience to have what we have now. And that is the non-existence of a beautiful mural telling a beautiful story of the mind. Do you guys have any other questions? Or? Okay, no worry.